Hantavirus infection is the topic. And hantavirus infection occurs worldwide. And in the US, it's commonly uh, seen in the southwest states, such as Arizona and Colorado. One of the important things to remember on clinical vignettes is that the patient is oftentimes described to have visited a rural area, uh, such as people who are camping or people who are hiking. So now let's discuss how does somebody get this virus. This virus is acquired from rodents. And what we're really referring to are mice and rats. And these rodents shed the virus in their excreta, in their urine and feces. Humans can acquire the virus via inhalation. So I wanted to show you a little photo. So here are those critters that are responsible for this virus. And here's a man who obviously is cleaning up um, their feces and he can inhale the virus into his lungs. Now hantavirus is known to cause two specific syndromes. And I'll talk about each one separately. The first one is called HFRS, which stands for hemorrhagic fever with renal syndrome. And the second one is known as HPS, which is hantavirus pulmonary syndrome. So let's first talk about HFRS. HFRS, which is hemorrhagic fever with renal syndrome, is acquired by a human when he or she is exposed to rodent excreta feces or urine that comes from a mouse or a rat. The symptoms involved include fever, headache, backache, and later the patient can develop a petechial rash. As the name of the syndrome implies, it later progresses to renal failure, and the patient can have protein and blood in their urine. The diagnosis of this involves serologic testing or PCR to detect the virus. Renal function tests of course are also done as are urine tests. And the treatment for this is IV ribavirin and if necessary renal dialysis. So that's the first syndrome. The next syndrome is HPS, which is hantavirus pulmonary syndrome. This syndrome is also acquired in the same way where a human can inhale the virus that comes from rodent excreta. And in clinical vignettes, what you want to look for is any type of description of a mouse. So that's a very, very important clue to coming up with the diagnosis of hantavirus pulmonary syndrome. Exposure to any type of mouse. The symptoms include fever, muscle pain known as myalgia, pulmonary symptoms of course like cough and shortness of breath, headache, and sometimes also GI symptoms. This can of course progress and the patient can develop pulmonary edema and that can cause respiratory distress which can in severe cases lead to respiratory failure. The patient can also develop low blood pressure hypotension. Diagnosis of this again involves serologic testing or PCR to detect the virus and a chest x-ray is done to detect the pulmonary edema. Treatment of hantavirus pulmonary syndrome involves really just supportive care since there is no actual drug that can be beneficial because ribavirin 
in these cases is unfortunately ineffective. So since the patient will have respiratory failure, oftentimes the mechanical ventilation is required as part of the treatment and sometimes vasopressors as well to help maintain the blood pressure since the patient often will have low blood pressure. Let's take a look at a few vignettes now. Which one of the following is the usual reservoir for hantavirus? As discussed in this video, anytime you have any mention of mice, that is one very strong clue to hantavirus, and that in this case is choice C. 34-year-old, otherwise healthy white man, is seen in the emergency department. He reports two days of fever, up to 103, severe myalgias in his legs and back, headache, nausea and vomiting. He lives in a trailer in a rural area of southwest Colorado and frequently sees mice in and around the trailer. He is a carpenter and has recently been renovating the interiors of some old barns into luxury homes. On exam, he is noted to have a fever of 102, blood pressure of 110 over 76, pulse of 96, and a respiratory rate of 24. O2 saturation on room air is 96. The remainder of his physical exam is normal. The most likely medical condition this patient has developed is. A lot of clues in this vignette including the mice in southwest U.S. with a lot of the common symptoms of hantavirus. So that would be choice B. And last one, a 32-year-old man from Arizona presents to the hospital with complaints of a four-day history of fever, myalgias, and cough. He owns an automobile repair shop and had recently cleaned his garage, which was infested by mice. On physical exam, he is tachypneic, and must use accessory respiratory muscles to breathe. Shortly following admission, he's intubated and diagnosed with adult respiratory distress syndrome, which underlying infection should be considered. Again, the history of exposure to mice in Southwest US with the symptoms that he has strongly points to hantavirus, which is choice C.